All right, in this video, we'll mainly concentrate on the nucleus. Let's talk about what it's all about together here. This is the most conspicuous organelle. You know, if I was going to draw a cell, it would pretty much be a circle, a circle with a dot in it. So a nucleus is usually really easy to see in cells. So when we look over here, we've got the membrane. Usually you can see the edge of the, the cell pretty easily, and you've got the nucleus. In a light microscope, you may not see much detail in there um, for the level of microscopes you find in a typical high school. Um, we have a few, we have one or two really nice ones here in school where we can get down to some of that more detailed area, but usually with a high school light microscope, it's tough to see organelles, not impossible. But you always see the nucleus, easy to see, easy to see. All right. They are usually spherical, but in uh, white blood cells, uh, they can be really kind of unique. You'll see lobed, so you might see organelle, uh, or I'm sorry, nucleus that kind of looks like this. Um, and they're not always uh, spherical like that. So you, you might see some really weird ones in um, uh, human blood, white cells, not red cells. Red cells don't have a nucleus, okay? Um, so let's talk about their structure. They do have their own membrane that we're going to call a nuclear membrane. So when we look at these cells, um, there's your cell, nucleus, this membrane goes around it. And you guys should draw in your notes like I do. Um, nuclear membrane. In the nuclear membrane, if we zoom up on, if we sort of zoom into a section of it, so that'd be the surface of it, it has these little holes called nuclear pores, and they kind of look like flowers, except it's a hole in the middle. Um, because what, what stuff needs to come in and out of the nucleus? Like, what would you predict goes through these pores? Any guesses? RNA is right. RNA is right. Okay. And we'll get into all that later. Okay. Um, you also have an area of the nucleus called, if we zoomed in on a nucleus, let's say we zoomed in on this, you'll have a second little compartment. So like a nucleus in a nucleus called the nucleolus. Okay. Um, chromatin, you might see some, uh, chromatin inside of the nucleus. Um, so here's sort of a nice cartoon version of this, okay? Now, you've got your endoplasmic reticulum right right here, so let's, let's not really worry about this right here, okay? You've got these little, here they are right here, they kind of either look like barnacles or seashells, your nuclear pores we talked about. Um, so a nucleus can look, here's electro, electron microscope pictures, and they kind of look um, grainy. They have little dots all over them. Those are either the nuclear pores or ribosomes. So um, it's kind of nice to have those ribosomes right nearby because you're sending out the, the RNA that needs to hit a ribosome to, to get the job done. So uh, there's your nucleolus right here. It's just this darker area. And I don't know if you can see it on your video, but uh, there's thread-like substances going through here, and that's the chromatin, okay? So those are the major structural parts we talked about. So just to review, the barnacle-looking guys or flower-looking guys, those are pores, okay? Just like you have pores on your skin. Um, the little dots are ribosomes, and we'll talk about ribosomes later, but they make proteins using RNA as a plan. All right, and it's, it's got its own membrane, and then it's got, its nucleo it's got the nucleolus, and we'll talk about what that's for in a minute, and chromatin. All right, let's talk about this a little bit more. It's a double membrane, okay, and it's in a really sort of tight space. I don't really care that you know how big it is. I just throw it in there. But nobody really understands what a nanometer is because it's so dang small that our brains don't even... Alright, so 
the nucleus maintains a really good uh, shape due to this protein matrix. Okay, so it does have a it does have a mechanism to maintain its shape. All right, was that too fast? Yeah. All right, sorry about that, guys. Let me just kind of underline the key stuff for you. We got a double membrane and we got an inner membrane and that gives us support. And that keeps the shape. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and jump forward unless somebody says wait. All right, sorry that was a little fast on the last one. Let's talk about the pores in a little bit uh, um, more detail. Regular holes, when I say regular, I mean they sort of repeat over and over again. It's not like the holes are, you know, clustered in one spot. Um, those are 100 nanometers, if you care. And there's a protein complex that and that's that sort of flower petal stuff that helps it maintain its shape, okay? Um, and obviously holes let things in and out. That's pretty, that's fairly intuitive. And we talked about some of the things that need to go in and, in and out. All right, am I okay to go on, guys? All right, let's talk about the nucleolus. What's that thing all about? It's like the nucleus within the nucleus. Uh, when you stain cells, and you almost always stain cells to look, to look at them, it will stain uh, darker than the surrounding nucleus. And not every nucleus has them. It just depends on the cell's structure and state of growth and some other factors. So what's it all about? This is a place where we store ribosomes. And ribosomes are protein factories, okay? I would say this is the most important thing on this slide right here. Storage area for ribosomes, okay? Um, just remember that not all cells have one. So if you're looking at it and you're like, where is it? That's, that's what you're thinking about. That's, that's the reason why not all of them have it. All right. Let's talk about the chromatin in the nucleus. All right, chrome means colored. And why do we call it chromatin? When it was first discovered, it was because it was discovered with stains. And the stains made the thing colorful, and that's how it got its name, okay? Is it actually colorful? No. Uh, Tin means thread. You'll see some bio words that end in tin, uh, actin, myosin. So they're threaded proteins. And so what do we have when we look at this? Chromatin is DNA and a little bit of protein in a loose format. Okay? Think about it like spaghetti. Now, you may think of chromosomes as sort of, you know, packed up uh, X's. They don't always stay in that format. That's usually the format they're in when they are, <clears throat> excuse me, getting ready for reproduction or, or div cell division. Um, the actual information in the DNA is hard to get to when they're totally packed up like this. So when you unpack them into chromatin, um, and these are chromatids, by the way. Um, there's lots of C words when it comes to chromatins. Chromosome, chromatid, chromatin. Those are easy to mix, mix up, so we'll, we'll talk about that later. But uh, th like I said, they do form the chromosomes. So think of these as chromosomes and chromatin as um, these that are unwound or unpacked. So you might want to shoot those drawings in.
All right. So let's talk about the nucleus. Like so far, we've just said it's structure. Okay. Now remember, every organelle you're looking for structure and function. All right. The nucleus is the control center. You'll hear a lot of people maybe call it like a brain. I, I don't really like that because it, it doesn't really have a consciousness. Okay. Um, this is where the genetic instructions are. And when we say control center, I'm going to turn my light back on. When we say control center, just remember, not every single piece of chromatin is going to be used at the same time in your cells. So if your cells need to make a certain protein, this is what controls that. Okay, they're really complex feedback mechanisms to control which protein cells make. 